I found these little thermometer and hygrometer or humidity sensor. I can't recall what they're called at the moment to be very useful. I have them all around my home. I have them in my workshops and stuff. So anytime I paint, if I have a paint that's really humidity sensitive or whatever, I know exactly what, how to paint with it. And when we got our new apartment last year, I bought a pack of like 10 of them and they've been so useful. And I've even, ha I've even given them out to people to have at their workshops, like Rick at the stained glass shop. But look at this, never even used. I mean, it's been running. So never in a bad climate and it's already dead. A bunch of the other ones, especially the ones that were at the workshop have all died. And it's down to the little, I guess they're zinc, but they might be alkaline cells. The L1154, L1154 button cells, just not lasting. When I used to buy these back in like 2015 and such, they would last like five or six years, but these just aren't lasting. So I'm gonna have to buy some new batteries. But then I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's two cells, but is it 1.5 volts or is it three volts? So I ripped one apart and turns out those cells are actually in parallel. They're not in series. So that makes things a little bit easier because I am a big fan of rechargeable batteries. I even have this little Sony 1983 solar battery charger that I just set in my, in my window. And I charge up these little nickel metal hydride cells that are about 1.2 or 1.3 volts. And I found that these batteries have improved so much that they actually hold their charge for a good six months or a year. And I was figuring, since this only needs 1.5 volts, I think that we can use this and we can modify these to have little wires coming up to the battery connector on the top. And it should be pretty useful. Now, of course, later on, I would like to get some of those little solar panels from either calculators or those little yard lights. And I'll actually make this permanently connected to this battery. I mean, I'll use the same method, but I'll just never remove it because I'll put a little solar cell on the top of it. Won't that be cool? I love stuff that just continues working for decades. So I'm gonna try this one first. I hope I didn't destroy it by just ripping it apart. I think I'm just gonna put it back together and see about if that works. Okay, this one isn't working. Let, let, let's see um, if a simple cell swap fixes this one as well. It does, look at that, okay. So first the good cells, one point Two five nine, so about one point two six, and then we have point six. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that these one point two volt cells should look like a charm. And just to test, let's make sure this is charged. Oh, one point three four eight volts. Perfect. Here we go, got it working. Good. So 
my own speaker wire that I collected from the trash. It looks like these contacts are nickel, so they seem to solder quite well. Okay, so then we can do a quick test. See. Oh, dare I say the lines seem even darker. Yeah, it seems like it's even more contrasted than these, so. I mean, it make, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, actually. Going forward, I might use Gorilla Glue, but for the time being, I'll just use some double-sided tape. Oh, that's nice. Can't quite go into that. Oh, oh, okay, I can. I'm oh, pretty happy with that. It actually seems to handle this voltage a lot better. The LCD is a little darker, oh. it seems. Yeah, it's, it is. Do you see that? It's, it, little, it's yeah, a little it's bit a little darker. darker. It's even better. It's a little more visible. I like that. And it worked pretty perfectly. I'll slowly get around to modifying all the rest of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. And I hope you do this too.